Hey, welcome and thanks for joining me for our Thursday devotion. Uh, today I'd like to look at a scripture passage from the book of Genesis, talking a little bit about the story of Noah, uh, and it's from chapter 6, uh, beginning at verse 13. God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people. So make for yourself an ark. You will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife, and your son's wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. You know, my mother and father-in-law and uh, an uncle and aunt of uh, my wife's just went and visited the ark experience in the state of Kentucky. It's a full-blown replica of Noah's Ark uh, with a complete experience into which you can go inside and read all different facts and see all different pictures of what this experience must have been like for Noah and his family. I was looking at just a couple of things today that were written down. It said that the Ark is uh, 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Uh, cubits might not be a unit of measurement that most of us are familiar with, but when we think of um, measurements for this arc, think about uh, football fields. Uh, think about how long and how wide those are. So I was doing a little bit of uh, measuring today and breaking this down. And so basically uh, I wrote down here that uh, it would be one and a half football fields long. Uh, the arc would have been three quarters of a football field wide, and its height would have been equivalent to probably at least a four-story, if not a five-story building. So the arc is, is very, very big. Uh, think about this. And it would have taken Noah a long time to build it. Now, let's put some other interesting elements in this story. It is very possible that up until this point, uh, and hear me out on this, uh, rain may have never had fallen on the earth before. Uh, the earth may have been kept alive by different streams and by a mist and by God's creation, uh, but the flood waters that surrounded the earth may have never had opened up and dropped any of this water down upon uh, people to be able to see again. So it is possible at this point in history that all those people who are living have actually not seen it rain. So think about this now. God comes to Noah and says, let's build a boat out here in the middle of nowhere. What's going to happen with this boat? Is Noah even near any large body of water? Have they even never seen a boat before? Uh, what does his neighbors think when he starts building this thing? He can't hide it in his backyard. He can't hide it uh, in some little uh, area where nobody goes to visit. It's massive, it's huge, and it's taking a long time to build. Do you think the people around Noah thought that he was literally crazy when he starts building this thing? Do you think that they thought he was even more crazy when he tells them that God has told them to be able to build this thing? I'm sure the answer is yes on both of those occasions. You know, do people ever think that we're crazy? because of the things that God tells us. Sometimes do things seem so outlandish, at least in the culture that we live in, that people would think, that doesn't sound right. It's possible, it's, it's true. I think there's a lot of things in scripture that may seem outlandish. Jesus turning water into wine, uh, Jesus taking people who are blind and giving them sight, uh, Jesus who calls Lazarus from the grave, someone who is dead and making them alive again, all of those things sound crazy. You know what sounds most crazy? A God that cares so much for us that he would do all of these things at his own expense to be able to show his love and his caring and just his generosity toward each and every one of us. A God who doesn't need us, a God who doesn't have to get joy from us, but a God who loves us so much that he would do anything, even something crazy like sending his one and only son to this earth to die and to rise again so that all of our sins would be forgiven. So if God can do those crazy things, 
I bet you and I can probably do a few outlandish things in the world too to be able to show how great his love is for people around us. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for uh, just being able to listen to us and for always pursuing us. Uh, Lord, call all of us to be able to follow you and to be able to build things upon this earth, not in honor of ourselves or to be able to show people uh, the great things that we can do, but to be able to point always back to you, directly to you, and being able to show them the greatest Savior that has ever been known to mankind and never will be known to mankind. We praise you for Jesus and, again, ask you to draw us near to him today. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Blessings to you. Hope you have a great weekend.